Hello and welcome. So in this video, we will be speaking about how we will be implementing WhatsApp WebGIS to front end and back end. This is by using Node.js on the back end and front and on the front end we will be using ReactJS, which is yep, which is a famous framework which is used on front end. Of course, we can also use the same thing with uh, what do you call it with Angular JS or, or with you know Next.js. So all of these options are available for us so we can do that and uh, yeah we can we can store the information over there okay so let me just open a visual studio code and i am going to open a folder which is which will be in documents and the youtube projects that i've created i'm going to create something about whatsapp updates over here i'm going to use for i'm going to create two folders one is the client and one more folder which is the server so okay for client i am gonna you know go to cd client and i am gonna do npx create react app WhatsApp WebJS client. Okay, just going to create um, an application for me, or perhaps I could have directly opened up in the same server, but it doesn't really matter. I'm gonna create class over here, and also I'm gonna go to server.js. Sorry, server, and over here I'm gonna do npm init. It's back at seven on WhatsApp web GS server. I mean, I'm sure you can forward all of this stuff. Okay, so I should have a package JSON and I'm gonna create an index.js file. And let me do npm i express there you go. Cool. So now uh, let me do, let me create um, Express app. You know, I'm going to use GitHub Copilot to basically help me to create this application. Create a basic Node.js with Express app. Not sure if it's going to do that. I'm going to run it on 3001 instead of and i am gonna do like app.listen on port whatever and so it logs up and also i am gonna install i'm gonna let's move to whatsapp webgs and let's do the simple thing which is npmi whatsapp webgs let me tell you it's a very very powerful library and i would highly recommend you to use this because also because it has you know, uh, a lot of a very big community, and also, you know, there are a lot of developers and tools that have already implemented the same thing, which is why I recommend you guys to implement this. It's gonna take a while. I am gonna go over here and check if it's finished. No matter what, npx is gonna take a lot of time to create React, create a React app. Anyways, let's move forward, and also okay there you go so now i guess this is created and let me do node index.js there you go so if you see the server is listening on port 3001 let me stop the server and let's go back over here and yeah so what we will do so Ideally, you know, in WhatsApp WebGIS, we have three types of authentications. One is the local the local authentication. We there is remote authentication. And there's no authentication. In this video, we'll be looking at local authentication. If you need me to create a tutorial on remote auth, just let me know in the comments. I will create one. But for the sake of this video, we will be using local auth. Okay. So now. It's pretty easy. What we'll be doing is that we will just need to make sure that uh, we implement client and 
I'm gonna do require um, WhatsApp that is okay this is a client you can look at the code if it's moving you over here has all of the stuff like mark chat and it's and send scene get number id all of these things will be stored this I and mean, client has all of that and also it's really easy to spawn a client which is by using um you know const client so what we'll be doing is that we'll be creating a class a whatsapp js maybe something like that and i am going to create a class for whatsapp webjs client so yeah class whatsapp and you know it, it's really easy to basically initialize so i've created a simple function actually you know what let's not create a class let's build that Let, let's directly implement it over here because that's not really a hard thing so so but before i before i move forward i just need you to understand what is a client client is the browser that we want to spawn so behind the scenes the way that whatsapp webjs works is that it's going to spawn a whatsapp webjs uh whatsapp web.com browser on chromium or you can set it up to use firefox or just chrome but ideally it, it's, it's just going to use a, a browser so if i spawn if i write this code to if this line of code is executed that means a browser is open browser with whatsapp web.com is ready to use or is open which also which will which we'll also see so if we run this code then this will run up and also there are events like on qr code listener on ready on message so let me do client dot on so there's qr code there's qr code event and let me just write the qr code okay so i'm gonna write a console log over here to just you know um, yeah and there is also client dot already and user it's not gonna return anything so don't worry so the client is ready so now this client js has different options let me open up the options and see so it has like odd puppeteer uh, options it has like like different different options over here and also has something called session or there's something called client id which we will be using so let me show you the options that we'll be passing so one option that we'll be passing is the session okay so, so 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 you know we can we can ignore the session we we will speak about session when we um, learn about the authentication path which is using local auth okay so now let's just add puppet here okay and headless headless means you know if you make it true you won't be able to see the browser but for the sake of this example we'll make this headless as false okay and authentication auth strategy that we'll be using will be new local auth so we will have to import this local auth actually let's go to the documentation and let's look at how the local auth works local auth will be this one so all we have to do is this new local auth instead of this one yeah and we can implement it from here oops there you go and now if i open it up it has client id it has data path so let me show you the options that we are required to pass so one important thing is client id so why do we need client id so let's speak about that we need client client id because we want to identify that this browser belongs to this particular client so it might be a use case from product or maybe someone that you know this client id 
I mean, you want like different different web browsers to be opened up and different different users might might be able to connect your connect to your server. So in order to do that, we need to identify that this browser belongs to this so and so user. So so so, so I'm gonna give an example. Suppose user A is um, going to um, you know authenticate on browser client A client ID A and user B is so basically we will be able to identify that browser A belongs to belongs to client ID A and yeah, and also we can later revive the session as well okay cool so I'm, I assume that you guys understand this part, which is an important part of this whole tutorial. So for now, let me just pass the client ID as maybe something like, you know, uh, your client ID, like it says. So this is very really interesting. I'm going to show you why, why, how, how WhatsApp.js works behind the scenes. Okay, and now once we have this, we will make this headless as false. There are different things to make sure that why do we have why do we want to make it make it as headless as false and why do we want to make it as headless true? So basically, you know, when you are running this thing on an actual server, suppose if you are using an AWS Elastic Beanstalk or maybe EC2 instance of this like T2 Micro, so you it's it's recommended that you use headless as false because of the fact that it takes up a lot of RAM. The browser, especially Chrome, is going to take a lot of RAM of your instance. And if you are one to save money, then you should definitely consider making it as headless as false. True, true. Which is which is going to open, but which will not take that much of RAM compared to headless as true. All right. With that being said, let me just make it false for the sake of this tutorial. And also, I'm just running it on locally. And I would recommend you guys to use this. Okay, cool. So now let me just run node server.js, I mean index.js, and let's see how it's going to open up the browser. Let's see if it did actually execute the code. Okay, one thing that we are missing over here, which is the important part, is that we need to initialize the client. Client.initialize. So initialize, if you look at the code, initialize is just going to, okay, so basically sets up events and kicks off the authentication request. So it's just actually going to open up your browser. So here we are attaching the request and keep in mind that don't keep your initialize over here. Make sure that you keep your initialize after your, your events, which is the recommended thing. And also, since we are using this, I'm also create. I'm also going to create a sessions, um, sessions object, all sessions object. Maybe that will make sense. Okay, here I'm going to store all of the sessions once they are authenticated. Okay, cool. So now I am going to do node.js, node index.js, and I'm sure you guys can see the magic. If you can see over here, and um, WhatsApp WebJS has automatically opened up with, if you can see over here with a nice session, your client ID, and also it's going to open up a Chromium browser, which is QR code. And as soon as that opens up, you'll be able to see the QR code. And now if I scan, it's going to have all of the, so now, one important part is that if you so if you see over here, an automatically file has been created with the client session slash your client ID. Okay, suppose uh, if I spawn if if someone you know suppose uh, this client ID would definitely come from front end or maybe any way that you should actually put in. So ideally, you should just uh, you know um make sure that this is coming from front end and you should basically run this on a using a socket server or maybe uh, maybe uh, express app which just listens to your request anyways 
So now, uh, if you see, as soon as there's a change in the QR code on actually the website, it will just open up. Yeah, I mean, you know, it will console log this. Why do we see this? Because it's the many QR codes are in this way. We need to use some kind of package to basically change the way that we are seeing the QR code. Okay. And also for now, I am just going to scan my mobile phone from here. So let me open up my WhatsApp. And uh, let me find where is WhatsApp. Okay, and let me scan it. This is this is also the reason why I have used WhatsApp WebJS. I mean, um, yeah, and also make the like, headless as false. So as soon as you we are authenticated, uh, we should get that client as ready. Okay, so it's gonna tell me that it's syncing. It's keep app open or whatever. Once it's active, that means it's authenticated. So one important thing that you need to see is that I'm sure you're wondering what are these, what are all of these files? So these files are just, you know, it's just the, let me just dock it out so that I can hide all of my chats. So if you see these stats are just, you know, your application storage, your local storage, your cache storage, your index DB, yeah, index DB and all of those information. If you see all of these things are there and your local, these things will also be inside over here. So just have to find it. It's just how the way that it, it's just the way that it's implemented. And local storage, if you see over here, it's gonna have all of your files. And there you go. So it's gonna save all of the files on a log file and then you know hook it up again. So now if you see I just forgot to write open code, which is I am gonna do this. Okay, so since we know that you know I'm gonna stop the server, okay. Now you might be wondering how I can basically uh you know scan the code i mean since i have already scanned and since you can already see on your whatsapp that you have already linked a device now if i run the server again since i'm using the same client id let's see what is going to happen I'm going to start the server it will be similar to what we are so let's see what it's going to do so it's just learning it's not showing the qr code it should ideally show me the QR code. And at voila, how did it actually spawn the browser with my authenticated WhatsApp? Okay, so the way that WhatsApp WebJS works is that since we are using the same client ID, your client ID, which is this one, it's going to take all of these files, put it inside the browser, and start the WhatsApp web which will automatically make the browser active. So that is how it works behind the scenes. So now, if I do client ID one and run the server, let's see what's going to happen. And look at this file, you will have a different file over here. And also you will have, you won't be able to see my session. All right, so now this is how local authentication works, which is why this client ID is very, very important. So now in the next video, we will be using, um, we will be configuring front end of this website. And we will also be using socket IO to basically listen to the messages and create a very simple application to authenticate and just start listening to the messages from the backend. All right, so, See you guys in the next video. Till then, goodbye and take care.